So the the military has adopted, well, I guess the army, has adopted a new rifle. Yes. And I got also, I guess, a new machine gun. The Sig Sauer. The Sig Sauer XM5, also known as the MCX Spear. Right. You have your own Sig Sauer that you enjoy. I have several Sig Sauers. Um, I really like Sig Sauers. I think they're really nice handguns. Oh, I, I meant the I, rifle. I don't own a Sig Sauer rifle. You sure? Yeah. What am I thinking? I'm thinking of the Styrog. You're thinking of the Styrog, <laughs> yeah. But I do own several Sig Sauer handguns. Does Sig Styr make the Styrog? Yeah, sure. The way you said that make me, makes me think that they don't. Yeah, no, they don't, Mike. Styr makes the Styrog. Sig Sauer makes a bunch of other guns. This is all simple to follow so far. Okay, so a while ago, the U.S. Army started yet another round of trials. Mm -hmm. The NGSW trials to replace the M4 carbine. And basically, my, my opinion is that every single decade, the army goes, Oh, we're thinking about getting a new rifle! So they can spend a bunch of money so that they can have a bigger budget next year. Which is insane considering the M16 and M4 family is already peak performance. You say that jokingly, but it kind of is. I, no, I'm not saying it jokingly. I think it's a... Like, one of the best rifles out there. Yeah. Granted, my knowledge of other rifles is limited, but the M16 A4 slash A2, that stuff is super simple. It's super accurate. It gets the job done. It works very well. It is actually a pretty modular weapon system. But yeah, basically every decade, they're like, we want a new rifle so that they can try out all the newest and coolest shit. Mm -hmm. I think, unfortunately, this time it went too far and they actually adopted one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Which kind of was a mistake. So basically, what they've adopted now is the MCX Spear, or it is now going to be known as the XM5 because it's they've actually selected it. And XM is the designation for a military rifle. It's the designation for the experimental military rifle pending actual full-scale adoption. Now, I looked at this when I saw the announcement, and the mm -hmm. rifle looks a little more complex. It looks very much more complex. It is based on the... It is a derivative of the SIG MCX, which is a fantastic rifle, works incredibly well, and again, let me say, this is my personal opinion and it should not be taken as fact. Mm -hmm. But what the army has done is they have gone to a weapon system that weighs more. Oh geez, that, that's already a real big problem. Has more recoil, or has more perceived recoil, you carry less ammunition for it. And it uses a computerized optic that I'm sure will not brick itself at the first available opportunity. The optic requires... Like a, is it yes, it's a computer-controlled optic that is capable of doing ballistic range and elevation calculations for you. So that you can hit a sol or you can hit an enemy combatant at 800 meters with improved and oh oh by the way I completely forgot it's also in a brand new caliber. You're interrupting me and also interrupting yourself. Yeah. I, I take it you have very strong opinions on this weapon. Let me let me start over. What I said. So the army went to a rifle that is heavier, has more perceived recoil, carries less ammunition, and is in a brand new caliber. Wait, it's a different caliber? Yep, it is 6.8 by 51 Fury. Hell is or SIG 277 Fury! So it's not even a NATO caliber. No. No, it's not even a standardized caliber. It's a brand new caliber because they're concerned about the ability of 556 to penetrate modern body armor. Okay, I can see why that would be a concern. But at the same time, this seems like a really big jump that I don't think has been fully discussed so far. No, it really hasn't been. Granted, I, I don't follow this all that closely. I'm glad. I'm very glad that the U.S. military listened to input from soldiers on the ground and from uh, people in the special operations community. Oh, wait, they didn't? Oh, they didn't! They didn't actually <laughs> listen to anybody's input, and they selected a rifle anyway. Is this going to be an M14 situation, do you think? Oh, probably. Where the, the rifle is just so awful, but that's the weapon that was chosen, so the soldiers have to use it, and it gets a bunch of people killed because it's so awful? I don't know if it's necessarily going to get people killed. I think what's more likely going to happen is that nobody is actually going to use it. They're going to continue using these other... So there's, I mean, there's already soldiers who are like, when do we get the new weapon? That's the neat part. You don't. Um, <laughs> I mean, you talked to me when I was in the Marine Corps and I was still using the M16A2 instead of the M4 or the A4 like everyone else. Yeah. Maybe it's going to be like a Windows 8 situation where everyone just decides to skip over this version. Yeah, maybe. 
so the thing is, this rifle weighs... I had to do an actual... Granted, it wasn't a lot, but I had to do probably about a good five minutes of Googling to figure out how much this rifle actually weighs. Because it doesn't say anywhere on the SIG press release... <laughs> That's not this, a good sign! ...how much this rifle weighs. It doesn't say anywhere on, like, the military press release how much this rifle weighs... I had to look up what the civilian version of the gun is, which is the SIG MCX Spear, and cost $8,000 if you want to buy one. Oh my. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it's $20,000 on Gun Broker. Okay. Because you can't find them anywhere. This rifle, the SIG MCX Spear, which is the civilian version of this rifle, weighs 8.3 pounds. Okay. A stock M4 without any accessories weighs roughly 7 pounds. So the new weapon is a pound heavier. It's a pound heavier, but that's not counting when you start putting optics on it. And you say it's coming with a standard optic. Nope. Didn't you just say it had a computer optic? Yes, it, it will be coming with the... Uh, it's an optic from Vortex. Oh boy. It's an advanced fire control optic with a 1,000 meter laser rangefinder and a ballistic computer to calculate the bullet's path to the target. That sounds like it could be useful if it works. It is the 1 to 8 by 30 active reticle fire control optic designed by Vortex. I don't know how heavy this thing is, uh, but it's not going to be lightweight. They designed this optic for the NGSW, which stood for Next Generation Squad Weapon. The NGSW was originally designed as a thing to replace the M249. To replace the grenade launcher. No, the M249 is the belt-fed machine gun. It's the Bravo, M249 Bravo. No, that's the M240 Bravo, and that's not a grenade launcher. Oh, okay. The M240 Bravo is the medium machine gun or general purpose machine gun, and it's great. It should not be replaced. I love the M240 series gun, but we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> the M249, it's a 5.56 squad automatic weapon. I don't like squad automatic weapons. Oh, no one does. They're heavy. They jam like every other cartridge. They've got a stupid magazine feed option that never fucking works. Don't ever use it unless you want to get shot, unless you want to get killed in the streets. Mm. The, I, I don't like the 249. Really? I wouldn't have been able to gather. The whole, this whole thing to me just screams boondoggle. Because <laughs> now, the, now Sig Sauer is going to be the official supplier to the U.S. Army for its handguns, squad automatic weapon, infantry rifle, suppressors, and ammunition. Hmm. It was Fabrique... It used to be Fabrique Nationale. Fabrique Nationale used to be the exclusive supplier for the 240 series, the 249 series, the M16, M4 series, and not the pistols. Pistols were by Beretta, but by subcontractors. So Fabrique Nationale used to produce all of those ones for the U.S. military. Now it's SIG. Okay. So the Army has adopted a new rifle. Maybe, maybe it will work, but... I feel like a lot of their basis for adopting this thing is kind of flawed. So we'll, we'll start with the caliber, I guess. The 6.8 by 51 or SIG 277 Fury. Is there any precedent for this new gun caliber, the Fury? I don't know. There Are there any other guns that have previously used this caliber? Or no. is it brand, it's brand new? It is brand new. <laughs> okay. So SIG designed it for the machine gun initially. The XM250 or the NGSW. They designed it for that. And then from what I understand, they designed the the SIG MCX spear to go with this machine gun. So they share a commonality in caliber. Because the army loves it when we have our squad automatic weapon and this gun are in the same caliber. <laughs> yeah? Oh my god, I love that so much. I just think about it at nighttime and I jerk myself off. Um, do, can, they, can they swap ammunitions? Can they share with each other? Uh, if they were both magazine fed then yeah okay that except seems... they're not oh okay <laughs> the, the the xm5 is magazine fed it and the belt fed the xm250 is belt fed <laughs> so pray see i think the marines were kind of i think the marines were smart in this in in what regard what the marines did is because the marines for the longest time had the m16a4 was their standard issue rifle yes and then they started giving m4s to everybody mm -hmm. kind of they started fielding m4s and basically, they had the M249. They were like, we hate this thing. Mm -hmm. It's big. It's heavy. It's stupid. That's the saw, right? Yeah, that's the saw. What they did is they enter, they, they put out a contract for, we want a new light squad automatic weapon. Yes. Emphasis on the light, because this thing is heavy. We want a lighter squad automatic weapon. We want it to be piston driven. We want it to take magazines. They kind of wanted to go back towards the... Like, basically what Russia did in the 1960s, which was 
give them a squad automatic weapon with bigger magazines so that you can swap magazines in between people. Okay. You don't have to use... You don't have a belt-fed weapon that's your squad automatic weapon. Yeah, you have a machine gun platoon, and but they're using GPMGs or heavy or medium machine guns. Okay. I, I, I don't know why I'm talking about this right now. It's a bit of a tangent. It is a bit of a tangent. Anyway... Turns out the reason they did that is because they basically wanted to replace the M16, M4s, with the HK416. They just had to find a workaround for it. HK. The, the HK416 is a, uh, it's a, it's another, it's an alternate version of the M16 M4. Okay. It's basically a piston-driven AR-15, if you want to put it into very simple in very simple terms. Okay. But Congress was like, no, you already have the M16 and the M4. Yeah. You don't need this new gun. Mm-hmm. And they went... Fine, then we want this gun to replace the 249. Oh, okay. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah you can do that. Oh, uh, by the way, we're replacing every single M16 M4 with uh, with this gun instead. I am already very lost because I'm, I have a difficult time following anything with guns because i got to remember all these nomenclatures and all yeah. these numbers. Basically, what the Marines did is the Marines had the M16s, and they didn't want the M16s because the M16s are long and kind of heavy. Right. They wanted M4s. Yeah, makes sense. But... Papa Navy and Congress were like, no, you can't have that. Mm. It's too much money. And Marines went, well, okay, fine. We no want saw. We're going to get rid of the saw and get our M4s. We want the M4s so badly. We no want saw. We want new gun is better than saw. You know, honestly, if we get rid of the heavy ass saw and replace it with the M4, I think no one would complain that much. We want we want new gun is, is like saw, but lighter and use magazine. Mm. I'm, I'm explaining to the, this to you in Marine terms. Okay. Okay. Explain it to me in Pogue Marine terms. Okay, in Pogue like, Marine terms? As if I were a reservist okay. who only used his rifle for 14 days out of the year. Okay. Because I was. Okay, I'll explain it to you in, in Pogue Marine terms. Marines have M16, but Marines no want M16. Marines want lighter M16. Right. Papa Navy say, no, you have M16. So Marines go, ah, me do big think. Oh, Papa Navy... <laughs> Me no want M249. Me, me no want saw. Me want new saw. Papa Navy say, okay, you have new gun. Okay. So Papa Navy allow Marines to have new gun. And then Marines go, Hooray! ha ha, me do big think. This gun for everyone in Marine. <laughs> Every Marine a saw gunner now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what they did. So I... <sighs> Anyway, that got like way. That was a weird tangent that got like way off topic. Um, well, listen, I thought that was the subject of what you were talking about. The Marines were kind of smart when they did that. So it's it's a gun that's still in the same caliber. If if you, if I were to show you a picture of it, you would just think it's an M4. Okay. The that is the that is the uh, M27 IAR, which stands for Infantry Automatic Rifle. Is that in the Marine Corps right now? Is that yeah? The Marines are actively actively using the M27 IAR, though in its current use, it's kind of acting more as a designated marksman rifle or just a, a squad automatic rifle. Now is basically what or a saw. Okay. They're kind of just using the M4 and that are going to be their basically their two main infantry rifles. I don't know if there's an advantage over the M4. The M4 seem to be peak perfection in my eyes. The the advantage of it over the M4 is it's it's more capable of sustained heavy fire. Ah, okay. It's it's use you can use it either as a longer range designated marksman rifle, which it's very good in that role, or you can use it as a weapon for suppressing fire. I imagine it could be a good specialist weapon, but the M4 is the weapon that everyone No, the M4 is great for just a standard issue. If you're just a standard pogue and you don't necessarily need a Specialist weapon. The M4 is great. I feel like if you pick up a farm boy and put him in the Marine Corps, you could give him an M16 or an M4, and he can figure it out relatively quick compared to all these new fancy weapons. Yeah, well, like with training, yeah. So let's let's start with the cartridge of this of this new weapon. Mm. I don't know why they didn't go with 6.5 Creedmoor. Why can't they just use the standard NATO round? It's been so good so far. But I don't like change! It's kind of annoying to me. That like we pushed so hard for NATO adoption of five five six, and now the army's like, oh well, we decided to switch to a new cartridge. I realize that you have to keep moving forward. You have to keep moving forward, but it is it kind of defeats the purpose of having a standard adoption of a widespread caliber. It has been oh, man the mil the U.S. Army has so many times 
They've done it over and over again, where they fit themselves and prepare for the last war they were in. <laughs> yeah. And then a new war happens that is completely different from what what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. And then you got soldiers going into a desert combat scenario wearing greens. Wearing olive green, yeah. So what I think what they're what they're trying to do is they're trying to gear up for a war against an adversary that has modern body armor. So like China or Russia. Yeah. We're trying to they're trying to gear up for like that kind of war, which means that we'll probably be fighting, I don't know, slug people from <laughs> somewhere else based on like how we slug people from space that have laser weapons. Probably. The, so the, I don't know. It's <sighs> We're going with this we're going with this new six point eight by fifty one millimeter cartridge. And I'm convinced the only reason that the cartridge is six point eight by fifty one millimeter is so that it will fit in three oh eight magazines. <laughs> they um, want to reuse the magazine because they're yeah, so they cheap. Yeah, they want to reuse the, the old magazines. Which, I guess, from a logistics standpoint, makes sense. You design it for magazines that already exist so that you don't have to design a whole new magazine for this gun. If you cared that much, though, just stick with the same caliber. Right. The rifle itself is a, de is a derivative of the SIG MCX, which is already a proven rifle. There are components in Specialist Army that are using SIG MCXs. It's a proven rifle. It's been used by SAS. It's been used by uh, members of the special operations community. The MCX has already been proven. So I guess it kind of makes sense to build your next generation rifle off of the SIG MCX. But then why wouldn't you just adopt the SIG MCX in 5.56 as the standard issue rifle for... Maybe that's what they're doing. You think before they bring it into active service, they're going to lower the caliber or make it NATO, cert NATO standard? I don't know. Like... Mm. Big brain, super sneaky. Big brain, super sneaky. Maybe the army is like, oh yeah, we're adopting this as the XM5. Oh, but also here's the XM6. The XM6 is the carbine version. Maybe that's what they're doing. The XM5 is the new... No, because it's the XM4. It's the new rifle. Oh, what if they're doing this on purpose for people like you? They say, here's a new weapon. Oh no, they're not thinking that far ahead. Here's a new weapon. It's awful in all these different ways. And then when there's an outcry, they can scale back some of these choices. Oh, you think they're doing a you think they're doing a Sonic movie thing? So, yeah, like that. They, where they, where they, they, they purposefully purposefully release a really bad design yeah. to drive up engagement so people talk about it and then go, actually, here's the actual design that we had. And people think that they're listening to feedback, but really they just got played. Yeah. I think it might be like that. No, it's not like because the army doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Okay. If the army gave a shit, then they never would have... If the army gave a shit, then when people flipped the fuck out about the UCP camo pattern, they would have rolled it back, but they didn't. Yeah. Unless it was the ver unless it was the long con, and they did that for... You know what? Yeah, I, what's, a couple, what's a couple thousand soldiers in the meat grinder <laughs> yeah. for a new camo pattern? Uh-huh. Um, anyway, the, the XM250 seems like it might actually be decent. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it that much, but the XM250... Well, then XM again. XM250. How many experimental weapons does the military need? Oh my god, dude. You have no idea. There are so many... It goes through so many iterations. <laughs> it goes through so many iterations. Well, the, in order to get to the point where it is, it has an X designation, you have to go through so many weapons trials. Mm. There were six different weapons that were all competing to get the XM250 designation. It wasn't just SIG. Right, I imagine so. Anyway... Uh, one of the reasons why they went with this new cartridge is because they wanted a cartridge that was capable of penetrating body armor at like 800 meter distance. But why are you even concerned with that when standard infantry can't even fucking hit a target at 600 meters hmm. with their current rifle? Well, maybe the new rifles will help them do that. Yeah, their new their new laser targeting ballistic computer that's from the future and will give the that it's that 100 isn't gonna blue screen the moment that someone accidentally spits on it mm -hmm. i know i know i sound like a boomer right now talking about how all oh, these soldiers dress like spacemen with their fancy red dot <laughs> optics i yeah. know i sound like a boomer right now mm -hmm. but like good lord i feel like this is just gonna be a massive disaster yeah and again this is just my personal opinion there are people that are far more intelligent than me that can say why the new xm5 is a good or bad idea you probably should listen to them because there are 
there are people that are much more intelligent than me that will be able to say why it's a good or a bad idea. My personal opinion, I think the XM5 is going to be hot trash. Okay. Maybe I'll take some time to look into this so I can have an actual discussion with you on it. Because right now you're just ranting to somebody who has very little knowledge on rifles. I don't think the new cartridge is a great idea. I think if they wanted to go with a new cartridge, they should have went with a 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge. Because mm -hmm. the 6.5 Creedmoor, I have personally shot 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay. 6.5 Creedmoor for long range shooting is stupid. It is like cheating. Okay, so it's not stupid. It's actually very smart. It's, it's good stupid. <laughs> okay. It's good stupid. It is like cheating. Trying to hit... I, I personally have shot at targets at 1,000 yards with both 308 and 6.5. With 308, you're doing so much math and calculations before you squeeze the trigger to try to hit a target, to try to hit a man-sized target at 1,000. So are you saying that 6.5 is more aerodynamic? 6.5 is a much flatter projectile. Hmm. So are you saying that, despite how much I love the 5.56, they've designed a, a, a better bullet that you don't have to compensate for gravity at long distances or anything? Oh, no. The 5.56, in my opinion, 5.56 is an amazing cartridge for an infantry combat rifle. I'm talking distances from 0 to 600 yards. Uh-huh. 0 to 600 yards, the 5.56 cartridge, in my opinion, is great. Right. It works great for that. For a long-range cartridge, I am not saying that you cannot hit targets at 1,000 yards with a 5.56. Because you can. It's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> but it is not ideal for engaging enemy combatants at 1,000 yards. So you think this new weapon caliber might be an upgrade? You're, he if, you're hesitating. If you are specifically talking about engaging targets at 1,000 yards exclusively, then maybe it's better. But 6.5 Creedmoor already exists. So why didn't you just use that? They're not using 6.5 Creedmoor. They're no, using... they're using 6.8. They're using 277 Fury. I, I don't know why they went to all of this effort to design a new cartridge with a tool steel penetrator when you could have just taken the 6.5 Creedmoor and shoved a tool steel penetrator into it. There you go. Now you have armor piercing 6.5 ammo that is capable of hitting a target at 1,000 yards with minimal adjustments to your reticle. So a month from now, when they announce that they're doing these specific things like uh, adjusting the caliber to be 6.5, You'll have to admit that I was right, and they were just faking you out to make you angry. I don't think they were doing it just to make me angry. Maybe they were doing it... Maybe... You, I, they're not to make you angry, but you know, they're, they're putting a bad rifle out there, and then they're going to pretend to listen to feedback. I don't think they're going to pretend to listen to feedback. I mm. think that the army is incredibly stubborn and will just do whatever it wants. Be, army does what army wants for army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to me, the XM5 program reeks of what happened with the Bradley. Uh, refresh my memory. The tank? The Bradley? Yeah, the tank. Basically, it was originally designed as a tracked troop transport vehicle with a little tiny gun on it. I remember the story. The Bradley was death by design by committee, right? Yes, basically. So that is what I think... That is what I feel is happening with the XM5. So a bunch of people have their hands in the pot trying to make the changes they want. You're going to get this amalgamation of a weapon. Yeah, basically. It was maybe maybe it originally started out as the SIG, just a straight up SIG MCX. Which sounds like it would be nice. Which would be good because it's a it's a modular weapon system. You can change out barrels very easily. The caliber's on it. not stupid. You can change out the cat you can even change out the caliber on an MCX very easily. Well that's silly. You can change it you can take the MCX and convert it from a 556 to a basically any caliber that you can that you can design the barrel for. So you could change it from a 556 to a uh, 6.5 Grendel or a 300 blackout. It's relatively easy. It's a modular weapon system that you can change from one to another. And I feel like what the army did is somebody high up in the military went, Oh, but I want gun to be in new caliber that is like 308. I remember using 308 when I went through basic training. Why aren't we using that? Fine, we'll design it in a new fucking caliber that, that is better at penetrating Chinese body armor. Okay. Here you go. It's in this new caliber. 
Um, yeah, why are the magazines so big? I think the magazines should be 20 round magazines because I know someone that works at this company that makes this magazine and they make a really good 20 round magazine. Fine, we'll use the 20 round magazines. Yeah, well, why can't they hit a target at 600 meters? We should give them a computer controlled optic <laughs> so that they're better at hitting targets at distance. We'll have a laser rangefinder on it. It'll be super cool. Fine, here's the optic. Great! Oh my god, look how stupid and heavy this thing is. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god, this is so dumb. Does anybody else want to put anything in? Yeah, why don't we have a suppressor on it? Fine, here's a fucking suppressor! Can I get a five-point sling? Where's my five-point sling? Yeah, give me, give me just one second. Not a five-point, a seven-point! That's better, there's more points! Can I put a flash hider on it? No, there's no room for my bayonet! I do feel like this is kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, did you ever see the, the movie, The Bradley Wars? We talked about it at one point. I don't. The Bradley Wars is basically, it's a, it's a somewhat black comedy about how the, just all the steps the army went through <laughs> or like the higher, higher ups and like the, the fucking, the military industrial complex went through just absolutely ruining the Bradley at every single turn. Mm. I don't remember. Is the Bradley still in service? The Bradley is still in service. And fortunately, once it entered service, enough improvements were made to it that it's not a complete piece of shit. Okay. It's better now. It's, but it's just better like, now. It's better now. But it, the thing with the Bradley is it's the same size as a main battle tank, but it has a gun that can't punch through the armor of any other main battle tank. Hmm. Its armor is too thin, so it can't stand head to head with other main battle tanks. <laughs> It barely holds any soldiers. So it's it's a troop it's not, transport. It's not an APC. It's a tank. It's it's a tank that cannot stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other tank that exists right now. Hmm. I don't know. Tank warfare is kind of outdated anyway. No, nah, tanks are still tanks are still important. Tanks are still important. The Marines did just actually, did you hear that the Marines got rid of all their tanks? So maybe they're not important. Marines don't have tanks anymore because the Marines are trying to go back to being a lightweight amphibious fighting organization. It's hard to put a tank on a boat. Yeah, it's really hard to put a tank on a boat. So They tried I, that on the submarine, but then the, the submarine went underwater and the, the tank never came back up. Yeah, it didn't come up with it. Well, it doesn't really help that they tried to adhere the tank to the outside of the submarine with Elmer's glue. <laughs> and dip spit. Yeah, dip spit. <laughs> so much of it. They figured they had so much of it. Why not? We Just got so much them. dip spit, and dip spit's real sticky. Oh, God. Marines are <laughs> fucking gross. <laughs> So, I, a little bit of a tangent on my own here. If you want dip spit for free, just go to any military base because there's cans and bottles of it. It is everywhere. If you want to eat somebody's chewed tobacco, oh boy, do I have a spot for you. Yeah, a military. Oh my god, so much fucking dip spit. So, yeah, I, I admire the fact that they're trying to be more of a, more of a lightweight, heavy fighting amphibious combat force. Yes. Which makes sense because that's what they should be doing. Mm. I'll have to do more looking into the XM250. I don't know enough about it. Okay, maybe your maybe your opinion will soften over time. Maybe my opinion of the XM250 will soften over time because it is supposed to be a replacement for the M249. It's not going to be a replacement for the M16 though. No. No, the XM250, oh. the XM250 is a replacement for the M249. The XM5 is a replacement for the M16 and M4. Oh, I Again, too many nomenclatures. I, I don't know what you're talking about anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, <laughs> Sorry. Let me, no, let me try to sit. No, no, no. Let's just accept the fact that I'm pretty ignorant of guns. Unless you put like a slideshow in front of me, I'm not going to figure this stuff out. Let me, let me simplify this for you. Okay. The army has adopted two guns. The XM250. Which is the Sig Sauer. Which is a Sig Sauer. It is a replacement for the saw. Okay. The XM5, which is a Sig Sauer. That is a replacement for the M16 M4. Mm, Sig Sauer must have paid somebody under the table for that. Yeah, because the army also adopted the Sig Sauer P320 as a replacement for the M9. I can't wait to see next week there's an announcement. A new tank made by Sig Sauer. That's what I that's what I was saying a minute ago of Sig Sauer is now the is going to be the exclusive supplier of rifle, machine gun, pistol, ammunition, and suppressors for the US military. Okay. Look, I think we should look to see who's got stock in that company. Yeah. Again, that's why I, the whole thing kind of screams to me of corporate boondoggle. I don't know if I'd say corporate boondoggle. Or, sorry, government boondoggle. Yeah, I think it goes beyond government boondoggle. Just like personal corruption and 
people investing in stocks so they can prop up the prices and make bank it's, off it. I it is entirely possible. I so they went with a new caliber to try to counteract new modernized body armor, and I feel like the rifle itself started life as a Sig MCX, which is a very good rifle. It started life as one of those, and it became this horrible, bastardized mutant creature <laughs> through death by committee mm -hmm. into the XM5 carbine. The thing that I think is really interesting, and the saving grace from this, the thing that is telling to me, is that US SOCOM is still ordering URGIs. I, I don't know what that is. The Special Operations com Community is or still ordering improved M4 carbines. I, I, that's it's as simple as I can put it for you. They're still ordering improved M4 carbines. Basically, they took one look at the XM5 and went, yeah, we're not interested. Yeah. We want M4 carbines. Just keep giving us those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As they should. That's fine. I don't need any of this other shit. Just give me the M4 carbine. Mm. I think the computer-controlled optic, while interesting... It is going to need a lot of work before it is ready for general infantry use. I think it's going to be very easy for anybody to break it. And yeah. If there's a possibility to break it, it will be broken. I had a phrase that I recited a lot while I was in the military that is, if you make it idiot proof, they'll make a better idiot. <laughs> I like that phrase. It's very accurate. There is nothing on this planet that is grunt proof. Except I don't know, maybe a rock. But then you would give, you would issue if you if you made a standard issue rock for the U.S. Marine Corps, <laughs> and you gave it to the Marines, and you said, "Here is your standard issue rock. It is grunt proof." A, gr a grunt would come back to you five minutes later with it on fire or broken in two pieces, and say, "I don't know what happened." <laughs> yeah. You, how did you even do? Or he would turn it into a titanium cube somehow. You would be like, "How did you transmute matter? How did you do this?" Well, uh, Snuffy and I were banging them together, and it just happened. You're a wizard, Private. So, soldiers are slow to adopt new things. Unless it is, uh, unless it is an immediate, right-out-of-the-gate success, they are slow to adopt new things. When I was in the military, and I was issued a red dot optic for the first time to put on my M16, the majority of people in my unit were like, I fucking hate this thing. I, I don't want to use it. I was taught how to shoot with iron sights. Why are you giving me this piece of shit? People don't like change. People don't like it. Now, basically every single rifle I own has a red dot on it. They seem very useful. It is a, it is a huge improvement. But at the time, I hated it. I didn't want it. I would go When I would go to zeroing courses, I would turn my red dot off and just still zero with my iron sights. Okay. Because I hated using it so much. Mm -hmm. You had to spend time with it to figure out how useful it was. Exactly. You think that's going to be the same thing for these two new weapons? You think they're going to grow on people? I don't know. If you had to say what your opinion is now on both weapons, is there one you think that'll eventually be okay and one that's not great? I think the XM, I think the replacement for the saw, I think the replacement for the saw could potentially work very well. I think the replacement for the M16, M4 is going to be hot trash and it will not work. Okay, yeah, I think I, think I have the same opinion. So I can't really say if my opinion is informed, but based on what you've told me, I would be very hesitant to replace the M4 with anything. And if it's not yeah. up to snuff, then yeah. So the army in 2017 replaced all of the M9 handguns with the M17. And I think the M17 is great. The Glock? No, it's a, it's a Sig Sauer. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, no, it's what I told you earlier. They, they, re they are the exclusive supplier. The, I, I, I don't know if Sig Sauer makes a Glock, whatever. No, they make a handgun. Maybe it's a, a Glock handgun. I don't know. No, Sig Sauer makes the P320. Yes. Which is now the replacement for the M9. Okay. Glock was also in that one, but Glock didn't win. And a lot of Glock fanboys will complain endlessly about why the Glock should have won. Mm -hmm. I People have their favorites. The army wanted a modular handgun that you can change out the grip module and you can put optics on it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. They wanted a new handgun. The 320 was the was the best one that was at the right price point. So that's the one that won. Okay. Yeah, the 320. Uh, apparently, most of the people in the military really like the 320. They they're a big fan of it. 
What caliber um, is that in? Nine millimeter. Yeah, okay, it's standard. Yeah, standard nine mil handgun. That's that's the, NATO standard too. Yeah, yeah, even NATO uses nine millimeter. Yep, NATO uses nine mil. Basically, everyone uses nine mil. But the fact that the army is now going to a the, their standard issue rifle will be in two seventy seven Fury. It's gonna make a lot of people furious. Woke up this morning. It was freaking nineteen eighteen. The army was adopting a twenty round magazine, fully automatic rifle caliber, squad automatic weapon. <laughs> Anything else you wanted to add to that? Um, I'm building a clone of a Mark twenty seven handgun. I've never heard of the Mark twenty seven. The Mark twenty seven is, for all intents and purposes, it is a Glock nineteen. Why didn't you just say you're making a Glock nineteen? Because it's a it's a slightly modified Glock 19. You could have just said it's slightly modified Glock that 19. That is standard issue for U.S. Army Special Forces. The reason I bring it up is because it does actually have something to do with what we were just talking about. Okay. Specifically, government bureaucracy and, and stupidity. Is this gun also designed poorly? No, actually. So, this is gun low. We have created it poorly as a joke. <laughs> We created him poorly. We trained him badly as a joke. I have misfired, making me the victor. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That's a lot of nuts! <laughs> anyway, in the early 2000s, U.S. Army Special Forces, whatever Delta Force is doing, Special Forces wants to do that thing. Yeah, Special Forces gets like, they can do whatever they want. They're Special Forces. And whatever... Oh, no, 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 because there's, there's different echelons. Technically, Delta Force is, like, Tier 1. Special Forces is, like, right behind them. And then you have, like, Rangers and then Standard Infantry. Okay. So, whatever Special Forces... Is, whatever Delta is doing, Special Forces wants to do. And whatever Special Forces is doing, Ranger wants to do. And whatever Ranger is doing, Regular Army wants to do. And whatever Regular Army is doing... Civilians like me want to do. <laughs> yes. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Gun nuts. But yeah, pretty much. Anyway. What do you, what do you call them people? Gun nerds? No. Like, Intolerable? Like, yes. <laughs> people that like to role play as soldiers. Flat range operators? <laughs> Something like uh, that. <sighs> you know, like those heavily overweight middle-aged guys. Oh yeah, I would have joined the military, but I got a bad knee. But I mean, if I had joined, I would have killed a yeah. thousand guys. If I... I would have joined the military, but I know I would have punched a drill sergeant in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, buddy. <laughs> I am done talking to you. Uh, yeah. I not... never want to talk to you again. Yeah, I would have joined the military, but like, you know, I'm just too cool. <laughs> I, I'm not even in the scene with firearms. I've heard that before. Oh, yeah, you were a Marine? Yeah, I would have been a Marine too. I saw a thing online. Slight tangent. I was looking up... I was basically trying to look up like... Can you join the Marines if you've been in the military? Mm, okay. If you were already in the Army, will will the Marines accept people with prior military service? Uh-huh. Uh, the answer to that question is, uh, it, it's, it, it depends. They do, yes, actually. It's, they do, but it, it depends. I know they do because I graduated boot camp with somebody who was in the Army previously. Yeah. The answer to that question, like the answer to basically all questions is, it depends. Anyway, I was looking that up online and... <laughs> One of the top things I saw was from the Marines website, and it was basically just like, nobody joins the Marines, you become a Marine. Uh, yeah. And I'm just like, God fucking damn, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut up! Anyway, um... It's like that, it's like when you ask the teacher, can I go to the bathroom? I don't like, know, can you? May you. May <laughs> you. So, in the early 2000s, Delta Force was using Glock 17s. Okay. Delta Force just does whatever the hell they want. Yeah, it's Delta Force. Pretty much all the time. They just do whatever they want. And they were using Glocks as their sidearm. And Special Forces was like, well, we want we want to use Glocks because they're a better military handgun than a Beretta. Okay. I love the Beretta 92FS. I know you do. I love it. But it is a, it is not a good military handgun. Oh, you don't think so? Is it too complex? It's got too many parts. Mm. It's got too many parts. Stuff can go missing too easily. A Glock has like 35 parts in it. How many moving parts? Just one? Oh, God. Probably like two. Yeah. I can't. I don't remember exactly, but it's not many. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry if I got that number wrong. I. It's I, just one moving part. The bullet. The bullet. Anyway. Um, it shoots it with magic. So, Special Forces was like, well, we want a weapon. And basically, Big Army said, no, you can't have a full-size pistol. You already have a full-size pistol. It's the M9. Here, we, you can't have full-size pistol. We, we have, have full-size full pistol, pistol at home. home. <laughs> full-size pistol at home. I have M9. 
Well, actually, full size pistol at home. Spaghetti, because <laughs> it's Italian. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> special forces will like. Well, we want we want a full size. We want this full size pistol to replace the M9 because mm-hmm. like we don't use the M9s. I don't like it. It's like I'm I'm just using a 1911. I don't I don't want to use the Beretta. So in order to be issued the Glock. They put out a specific contract tender for, we need a compact handgun. Because Army said we can't have a full-size handgun, but we can have a compact handgun. (laughs) So they put out a tender for compact handgun, which the Glock won. Mm -hmm. Because that was the one they made the contract for. So now you have a clone of that gun. I'm building a clone of that gun. I'm buying parts for it and putting it together. Are you going to proudly display it? Yeah, I'll, I'll put a picture of it online. And then sell it? Probably at some point, because that's what I do, is I build a gun. I'm super excited about building this. Oh, man, I'm going to build this rifle. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be so much fun. I have fun. I lo- I get all the- I find all the parts. I, like, dig around online. I find all these parts. I put it all together. I get my hands all dirty. And then as soon as I put it together and I've shot it four times, I go, this is boring. I hate it now. And I throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> sell it on Twitter as an authentic Zach Hazard original. I don't sell it on Twitter. I can't sell it on Twitter. I can't sell guns on Twitter. What's wrong with you? You can't sell guns on Twitter. No. What about MySpace? I don't know if anybody even checks MySpace. So you couldn't get in trouble for it if you did. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> People are using MySpace to launder guns because no one checks it anymore. I think you have to use Tor. Anyway. Way uh, to ruin the joke! 